All right, good evening, guys. Kenneth Tortoise Capital, Nightly Strategy Podcast, February 2nd, 2023. Uh, we're going to start with the um, swing portfolio review. Uh, so there was a lot of uh, profit taking today. Um, a bunch of minor positions, I would say. Start with Alcoa. So Alcoa was one where on the intraday turbo, we had elected to keep a piece for the swing, and that's given us one, two, three, nice move, three days up. Today, uh, it it opened and then started dropping like a rock. It came through the RL10. The RL10 rolled over and it was approaching the edge of the dragon. And I had already given back this much, which was about two, if that's a unit of risk, I'd given back two of those. So I just made the command decision to execute at uh, just north of the edge of the dragon. So cash this one in Alcoa and flat. Check or hold. Uh, Cliff, basically the same play, uh, only this was the Kata 2 entry from yesterday that closed well, and then today it just started to decay, not as violently as Alcoa, but by the time that it came and crossed the um, PSR, we just took that exit and, um, and cashed that win a little over 1R. Um, probably could have had that with a better exit up here at the RL10 uh, and would have saved a piece. But it didn't seem to be as painful as Alcoa. So I gave that one. I took Alcoa early and gave this one a little more room to run. Uh, in Chevron today, what we had was uh, we had started uh, this Kata 2 uh, two days ago. It closed here. Uh, then yesterday uh, closed about here for basically a scratch. And then today it just sold off sharply. And so on the collapsing dragon, I should have had the collapsing dragon exit right about there, but I took it here and then stopped and reversed essentially here. Uh, and then I, I cashed that one because what I wanted to do was get even. Uh, and so I had just lost this one. That's about minus 0.8. This one gave me about plus 0.5. I didn't want to hold that overnight. Um, I will be ready to resume the short side trade because CVS is coming out of a Godzilla. And this both of these were efforts on a reversal on the Godzilla. But this collapsed. So I wanted to get paid. And then I'll be ready to trade that again short in the morning. So we got a little bit of our money back with that afternoon move. So net on that swing was about minus 0.3. Uh, Devon Energy. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit here. So we got short yesterday. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We got long yesterday here. This one rolled over. Uh, we took the uh, about minus 0.8, then got short here. And recovered a little bit. Again, that's another one of those make a 0.5, lose a 0.8. So that was netting out to about minus 0.3 on that trade. Uh, I will be ready to take that short again tomorrow if it collapses in energy. Uh, emerging markets. So this was a uh, this was a 551W. From here, we lucked into that gain. It held and then resumed and closed really well yesterday. And then today, it just started to sell off along with everything else. So I cashed that one because um, I, I wanted to, I didn't want to give that gift away. So this one was a nice trade. This was about plus one, two, three, four. So this one is plus four. The last two were minus point threes. 
This one's a plus four. So when we're on the winning side, we like to be large. That's a good thing. Uh, Ethereum, just tracking that one. Miss the uh, the um, uh, SSC yesterday. So we're just stalking this one. Um, I'm going to let that just keep stewing for a while. Um, this is Mexico. So uh, yesterday we took the GIP. Or no, yesterday we took this uh, uh, SSC. It closed pretty well. Today it gapped open, ran up, and then started to fail along with everything else. So we took that one as a gift. So there's one unit of risk. That's about plus two. And then when it collapsed another risk box further, uh, I front run the um, collapsing dragon or the, uh, the Kata 2 here and uh, take that one. And then I just decided to cash that off that little reversal. I didn't want to hold that overnight or stick around. So that's about another plus two. So we cashed about four out of Mexico. This trade so smoothly intraday that I almost prefer that I'm conditioned to kind of day trade that one, even when it's a, on the swing trade time frame. Remember, the 30-minute is also a very slow intraday trade. I just didn't want to hold that overnight. It's been trading directionally so well that I felt I would rather take the bird in hand. Uh, next one up is uh, Brazil. Same pattern, the moves was was not as large as in uh, Mexico. So we got started well, then this thing uh, gapped up to here and started to sell off. So I wanted to cash one. I gave back one and cashed one, so that's plus one. And then on the, uh, the um, caught a two short, because you have a high and then a lower high, and they get the regression line crossing the dragon and it's just about ready to hit the PSAR anyway so I put the standard risk box on it held my nose short and that gave back about 1.5 and this was another one got out of just before the end of the day on that little recovery I just wanted to make bank and reduce my overnight exposure so we'll take that win um, so I like the I like the double win on this one that one felt especially good. Uh, international paper. Uh, we started that swing uh, yesterday on the Kata 2 after the Fed announcement the previous day. So that's our initial risk. And all it did today was just kind of move sideways. So we're just leaving the standard stop in here for the 1R. If it violates here, I will go short. Uh, I won't go a second position until it breaks above, say, 4250. So this is just the tactical zone in here. Is it going to break out above this? That will cause me to move my stop up. Or is it going to hit for one hour loss and I'll take the short? We'll see. That's the uh, That one's open and about uh, zero right now. Um, the real estate, uh, which gave the part of a really nice move yesterday, so it closed well here. And then this morning it ran straight up and then started to decay. And we took it at the RLXD, and that was a really nice win on a very measured risk. So that's like one, two, three, four, five, six. This one was plus six. That'll make you happy. Uh, marijuana, or I'm sorry, not marijuana, uh, McDonald's, sorry, um, are long recovered, and then it started to sell off again, so I just took the minus point two. I've just been on the wrong side of this thing uh, all over the place. Scratch that one, micro loss here. Was not able to get that move, or that move, or that move. Just out of sync. Uh, but just trimming the losses, trimming the exposure. This one is marijuana. So this one had a 
Z3 breakout, you know, that Kata 2 plus a PSR flip. That was the gift that we took yesterday uh, and then re-entered on the recovery above the Dragon. So that's like a Kata 2, standard risk. And then today, uh, cashed it for a two-day uh, plus two. That felt professional. Clean energy. Uh, this one just ran amuck today. After yesterday's nice close, and we were in the plus column, it gapped up and then just monkeyed around. And then when it broke below the dragon, uh, I decided to cash that again to reduce exposure. One unit of risk. One, two, three. That's a plus three R um, on that swing. I, I love the 30 minute. I don't know if you've noticed. Uh, the treasuries, which had been, um, we'd been buying as a hedge on the uh, PSAR flip, had an initial burst and then just decayed. And then during the Fed announcement, it's had one, two strong days and then started to decay today. When the PSAR was hit, I just exited here. Just glad to be out of this thing. So that's the trade from entry to exit and there's one unit of risk one two three that's plus three but over one two three one two three four five six seven eight that was an eight day trade that yielded plus three one of the longer holding periods you've had just being persistent uh, Tesla standard uh, Kata 2 continuation there with a tight wrist box uh, closed well uh, yesterday. Today it ran up, stabilized, and then started to fail. I gave it as much room as I could, but then took it at the PSAR. So that's one unit of risk. One, two, three, four, plus four on a two day trade. If you're not careful, you can make a living at that. U.S. Steel, uh, routine, Kata 2. You've got lows, higher lows, PSR flip, standard risk box. It ran up nicely yesterday. Today it ran up again, and then as it came down and crossed the PSR, just took it for plus one. And that's the swing portfolio. So not many uh, positions still open. I think it's just uh, international paper, if I recall. Um, so this was a, a chance to just collect capital and clear the deck and get ready for tomorrow. I will shift to the intraday sniper trade of the day. So this one is in Intel. Intel was a double uh, double volatility yesterday. It was very volatile on both the five day and the one day. And tech was poised to move. So here's where it closed yesterday. Here was the gap up entry, or the, I'm sorry, the gap up opening. Here's the OR3. This one failed through the bottom of the OR3, so we're short. Then with the, it turned out that the standard risk box was as big as the OR3. So now we're short from here. Check or hold. A uh, quick reversal for a half an hour loss. It rolls over. I get the same entry, just with the same risk box. We just put the entry back on, same thing. And now what I'm looking for would be something like, uh, uh, if it breaks below the collapsing dragon here, then that's a confirmation that this thing is really working. Um, if it were to break out above this, uh, I would stop and reverse and go long. So this is the tactical trade space in here, and my job is to get my stop from here uh, to no lose plus dinner for two. I would consider adding the second position, but only if the market itself and then all of tech and all the semiconductors were terrible, 
that's the only time I would put that second position on so early. I took the uh, I took the exit here on failure to fail further. It didn't. It started to roll up. So I'm now just tracing the edge of the dragon. So I want to ca I cash that one here and make bank on that trade. And that feels good because I've got one unit of reward, or one unit of risk. That's about a plus one, and that pays for the half an hour loss that I took there. So we're net positive for the day. Um, a little slow to get in on the um, bad fill on the uh, the SSC standard risk. I'm really interested in it when it gets above here. So it's right at a very critical test, test moment. As it's testing right there, I should be moving my stop to about, let's call it the two bar low so that I can lock in this little wedge of gain. And then I can decide whether or not, how soon uh, would I be willing to add a second position. Check or hold. It's probably slow. Could have gotten a second position on probably, but now it's starting to stall. That's a strong candidate for an exit right there. Again, at the you wouldn't offend me if you exited right at the edge and then made bank on that whole piece. Nothing wrong with that. And that's a bar later. That's what I did. Now I'm ready to try short. It had uh, plenty of opportunity to resume, but it didn't. And now the RL10 rolls over. Uh, summer turns to fall. PSR flip. Put the standard risk box on it. And we're short. Hoping to see it get back to about here. Uh, reverses against me pretty quick. So I take the uh, one hour loss. And that's a stop and reverse. Uh, because it's already, you know, so near the high of the day. This is where the emerging dragon would be. So that's just a, a logical stop and reverse. And I'm betting on that this momentum is going to give me another leg up. Slow grind. I, I think, in retrospect, there was a moment in here to get a second position after it had really cleared. It made a new high on the RL10 and it didn't didn't break the PSR. I feel like uh, somewhere in here there could have been an emerging dragon. It's not quite 2R in hand but it's pretty close. I finally do get it in this case after so you got a consolidation and then a gain consolidation and a gain consolidation and a gain um, so there's that's about two R in hand standard exit on the PSAR flip when the RL10 crosses I exit and uh, we're going to stop and reverse that one. Fall turns to winter. Starting to consolidate. Take the routine exit at the PSAR. Winter has turned to spring. That now makes this an SSC for sure. Because here's your um, here's your harsh winter. RL10 bottoms out, crosses the dragon, crosses the PSR. 
That's a classic SSC. You could say, yeah, but isn't it also a Kata 2 because you have higher lows? I wouldn't disagree. <coughs> it just makes this more persuasive because now you have a nice target. Just if it goes up to test the intraday high, you've got about 1, 2, 3 R potential. So that's actually a measured trade. It doesn't have to break out to a new high for that to be a very good trade. Um, it gets up that far, and so what I do is I take the uh, I take this exit up in here, and I keep 20% as a swing, and then move my stop to here. So this one is a swing trade now. It's in the money if it hits my stop. The only way I take a loss is if it gaps down below my entry. My stop, which was here, is now up to here. Okay. So converted that to a swing. So I've got to add Intel to the uh, swing trade. Check or hold. Check the traders real quick. Uh, Agnieszka, there wasn't much movement in uh, the, the pound yen where she was. Uh, she got a little taste right here, some grinding. She got the move that was available, but it just, uh, you get chopped up here. Take a look at when, when those Z3 lines are compressing. You might not take those two trades. You might wait for the expansion of the Z3 lines. When that starts to expand, that becomes a reasonable trade. There just wasn't much movement. Right now, I think the big move is in the dollar-denominated pairs um, because of the Fed announcement. Uh, she makes it back in uh, Tesla. Uh, here was the gap up. She gets into it. I like the scratch. It didn't follow through. So she gets out, but then when it starts to follow through, she gets in and gets paid. That was an excellent shot at getting back to the RL270. Maybe stayed a little bit long. Like I think when it breaches the dragon instead of waiting for the PSR, you might have trimmed just a little bit off of that. So net positive for the day on across our two trades. Uh, Kata 2 and Devon. Uh, Nolan brings in a positive result. Uh, there's a lot of trading going on here. Here's the OR3. He gets short for a scratch. Resumes with the collapsing dragon. Bingo. 2.4. Now this thing takes off. Hits the edge of the dragon and starts to roll back over. Uh, gets short here. Uh, oh. Yeah, uh, trade station error had to re-log in, so that one hurt. If you get short here, I, I'm not offended by that because the idea is you have this great big sell. The rebound never even got through the dragon, so now it's starting to emerge. So you're actually front-running this collapsing dragon, and you're trying to make bank on that. But if it doesn't, if it doesn't work and it starts to fail, you got to exit that at the dragon. That was a trade station error, so we had some trouble. Now, when this little R10 wiggle, that's a nice Kata 2 entry. Got paid nicely. That's your indicated short, which would pay off to here instead of a scratch. Uh, I like the long. I like the stop and reverse. On this one, uh, I might have wanted to take it a bar earlier, but you got the same exit after all at the edge of the dragon. This is slow to re-enter. We should be here, and then you would at least scratch. So this could have been maybe plus two. Uh, and then just when you think it's done, it ain't done. That Z3 compression, and then a rejection of the v, uh, rejection of the VWAP might have gotten you into that trade. Still pretty good workmanlike effort. Uh, this is uh, Gary. Hey, if, if you could do me a favor, if you could make those 
uh, entries bigger. Uh, it's it's a, little, a little hard for me to see what's going on here. Now, to be honest, uh, the OR, I understand what you mean by OR10, but really the only ones I've tested are the OR3 and the OR60. So the 10, there's an argument of why it should work, but um, I think I would be more inclined on the PSAR flip to be short here rather than covering a short here. I think um, I think I'd wait on the 10 minutes. I think my brother would tell you too. You want to um, you want the PSAR shorts or the PSAR flips, and then when it emerges from the dragon and everything is rolling over, we might can be short in here on the PSAR flip with a stop at the top of the dragon. And then you'd probably cover that somewhere in here so that you could get that trade. Uh, this rollover is front running the K2. It's not it's not a K2. Uh, because the uh, a K2 looks like this. And what you're doing is you're tracking wherever see where that thing bottoms out? It's not a K2 till you get over in here or here. So this is not a Kata 2 on 10 minutes. Um, quick exit. You might have gone long there. So the, the 10 minute, um, you got to take those as they leave the dragon. Uh, I would invite you to take a look at the 3 minutes because the 3 minute on Devon is a much clearer set of patterns. And then, uh, and then you can start making bank on those, on movements of that size. You can actually get paid on the three minute, and it's I think it's manageable. I would shift your practice to that. Let's see. So we want. Uh, let's get our daily report up here. For those of you in the sound of my voice that are thinking about the uh, Creativity 202 cohort start, um, VTI extended the uh, sign up till like February 15th. So I think we're going to start one week later. I said February 12th, but we're going to do that February 19th. So I'll put some out in writing on that. So you got an extra week to consider. Let's go to the daily report. We'll start with um, dashboard number one. All right, so uh, still bullish quiet. That's a positive sign. Pretty good strength and resilience on these different look back periods. We're still 4% above the 200 day moving average. Uh, risk on, but neutral volatility, so it's not wildly volatile yet. That's generally a positive sign right there. In the Dow Tactical. Uh, a reasonable number of auto framers. Got a couple 5DDs in Chevron and McDonald's. Uh, in the ETFs, uh, again, no auto framers at all. Um, Mexico, to me, is the hidden gem of all this. 
I like that tech is uh, leading the way. Um, uh, oil and energy and exploration are all suffering. Standard planning factors for the auto framer for swings. Remember this uh, risk reward is based on a estimate. It's using the, the today's range as the 1R risk. And then it goes up to compute the 10 day high. And then expresses the reward as multiples of risk on a simple retest of the 10 day high. And that's how you get this risk reward. So things like Walmart still very favorable. Uh, Johnson and Johnson and oil. Just a handful of squeezes, Walmart, McDonald's again. Uh, no, no Godzillas. Um, we've got some uh, double volatilities here in play, so um, I like these two. Again, I like double greens. Because that tells you it's in play already. You don't have to wonder if it's in play. It's in play. So lots to choose from on the most volatile. The biggest one-day movers, this is where we get the Z-score of the one-day volatility. And look at how, how many are above two full standard deviations. You know, there's 20 in that list. Humana, Advanced Micro, Intel, that's enough for me right there. More to follow on Intel tomorrow. That's these two over here. Standard sniper stats for the auto framer from TC2000. Um, in, my, in my tactical symbol set, sorted by Z5 descending, Intel, high priority for tomorrow, double green. Tesla, also in play. Emerging markets, very interesting. MACD four seasons being dominated by the summer. Uh, lots of big breakouts today. And just a handful of weakness in that energy sector. Our trading value rank, which multiplies the Average range percentage times the frog quality number, and you get, you know, high price candidates. Tesla, metals, and I'm sorry, I keep doing that wrong. That's clean energy. Uh, oil, Apple, energy and oil exploration. Yeah, I like, I, I like that Microsoft and Intel are on the list. And that's everything we got for today. We'll get this published and processed, ready for them tomorrow. Uh, take advantage of that link to the Creativity 101 course for free at a dozen people sign up. It's, it's really pretty good. It comes in bite-sized chunks. It's not all the secret sauce that Fletcher Treatment does, but it'll do you no harm. And it's a nice introduction to, the, uh, to, to some traditional means that are proven to be effective, just not quite as effective as uh, the Fletcher Treatment. And it's free. So take good care, and we shall see you tomorrow.